Welcome to Inking on the Fly with me, Amy Jasper. Today I am unboxing the paper pumpkin for June. This one is called Expressions in Color, and you can tell by the box that it's going to be amazing. Pretty. It's just beautiful. Look at this box. It's just gorgeous. Okay, let's open it up and see what we can see. So right off the bat, we have two, not one, but two ink spots. So we have Bumblebee, which is one of the in colors that um, we've had already for about a year. And then we have Evening Evergreen, which is new to us um, this, just this month, just June here. So pretty exciting that we have both of those. Hi, Eunice. Yes, we, yeah, we didn't have to water our plants on the weekend. That's right, because of the rain. But I was expecting to be able to go swimming flat this weekend because the forecast that I saw said it was going to be like almost 30 degrees. But it wasn't. It was very chilly. Well, it wasn't very chilly. It was not cool, warm enough for, for swimming, that's for sure. Okay, we have a beautiful stamp set. So this is um it's got you're amazing thanks and for everything it's got some um extra little elements there great sentiments sending hugs congratulations um many i guess you can many hmm, we'll see what they're doing with many i guess oh many thanks that would work and sending many hugs um, yeah, that's kind of cool. This flower looks like a flower that I saw when I was camping. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. Anyways, I, I used a special nature app to take pictures and learn about some of the flowers and their names in the area where we, where we were camping on the weekend. It was pretty cool. Okay, we have, what does this say? This is telling us that this expressions in ink or this, what is it called again? Expressions in Color uh, Paper Pumpkin Kit coordinates beautifully with um, the Expressions in Ink Specialty Designer Series Paper, which is these. Aren't they amazing? They're so beautiful. And I haven't been able to get my hands on them because they've been back ordered so badly that I can't, I couldn't even order. So I don't know if, if they're available yet, but I will be ordering them as soon as I can. So that's what that's telling me. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see what's in here. Let's just pull this out. And of course you have to save the tissue paper because it is useful for many techniques, especially white gives us lots of options. So let's save that. The, um, blue pa the blue tissue paper that usually comes in the box, I use for um, wrapping. I wrap things with it. So, ooh, okay. I'm excited for this. This is, I, I know this is going to be beautiful. I just know it already. Let's see. Shrink wrap. Am I right? Okay. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Glad you could be uh, pop on and say hello. Just opening my paper pumpkin. What have we got? We've got Evening Evergreen, Baker's Twine. I'm always hoping it'll be linen thread because that's my favorite, but it's Baker's Twine, which is fine. And I feel it's a little stiffer than. I, I like Baker's Twine too, but I really like linen thread. It has a bit of a waxed. Um, coating on it or something and it just has a little more shape to it which I like okay we have some beautiful gems I'm guessing that I haven't um, ordered the ephemera pack that goes with what is it even called it's not that doesn't sound right there's a pack of embellishments that goes with the designer series paper that I spoke about earlier and it's a whole thing. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. The um, it's called Expressions in 
ink ephemera pack so it has sequins in it but they look more pink than these ones these ones have it might just be the picture but these are very iridescent lots of colors show up depending on how the light hits it so it might be similar but this is designed to go with the designer series paper that coordinates with this kit so okay so those are adhesive backed sequins sequence and then we have adhesive dots dimensionals envelopes oh different sizes okay so we have some note sized envelopes and regular card sized envelopes looks like only three note sized ones and then Okay, so we have nine cards that we get to make, looks like. And then we get to the beautiful paper. So pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is clearly um, evening evergreen kind of coloring. Beautiful. So that's those. Then we have some labels. We have some vellum. Ooh, look at that. So pretty. It's got a beautiful pattern on it. And then we have card bases. So that's our, I'm thinking that's one of our new in colors and I can't think of its name. Freesia, fresh freesia. I'm guessing that's what that color is. So pretty. And I'm excited because I just bought some alcohol from the, the store I finally found some that was 99% alcohol rubbing alcohol so I can play around with this technique that I don't know if you've seen the alcohol ink technique that's going around which sort of creates that same pattern concept so these are kind of cool a bit of a pain to get out okay let's pop these out so these are dies for the cards and don't want to rip them so I'm going to take them out very carefully ah, okay beautiful of course everything's beautiful in here my goodness okay I'm going to pop these out now while I'm while I have them because that will be easier later when I assemble I love the I love dyes when they have the variation of color. It's pretty cool. It's an interesting thing going on down here. I'm not sure what that's what that's doing, but I'm sure there's a plan. There's a plan happening. All right, this one. These are these take a bit of time to pop out, but we know that it's worth worth the time, right? It's just not so nice for you to watch me pop them out. There we go. There. Okay. So we have those. And there's more of that for the other cards. Oh, and we have uh, Evening Evergreen card bases. We have more labels. Maybe I'll pop these out too. So these are outlined with, it looks like black, but it's, it's evergreen outline, evening evergreen. And ooh, more card bases. These are your bumblebee card bases. Oh, and more fun things. It's all so exciting. Okay. Let me just, um. Hmm, I thought maybe I could organize, but I'm not going to organize. Okay, we have more things to, to pop out here. We have um, thanks, danka, and merci, and this beautiful piece of vellum that's die cut. Oh, I'm trying to pop out more than one. Let's just do one at a time. And 
because I am an English speaking person and most of my people that I send cards to are English speaking people. I will use the thanks. Okay, I think that's all of our paper parts. Okay, so then we have, let me just pop out these as well. Okay, then we have our chipboard, which I will save because it comes in very handy for all sorts of things, crafty things. And then we have instructions. Oh, well, now I know what I'm making. Look at these. They're so pretty. So those are the mini um cards note cards and then we have the larger ones to make very nice okay instructions in color love that they're in color and it's very like ikea style so great um multilingual everyone can understand regardless of what language you speak or read uh, so this kit contains, so they show us all of the things in case we're missing something. We will know when we look at that. Um, we can make nine cards. It coordinates with Bumblebee, Evening Evergreen, Fresh Freesia, and Polished Pink. Another um, new in color. I actually really like, I'm not a pink person, but I quite like that pink. Um, and then they have some samples of other other cards that you can make using some of these elements. Okay, so let's do this. Let's start with card number one. On page number one. All right then. So it tells me that I need 26 inches of that Evening Evergreen Baker's Twine. I need my vellum paper piece and the um hmm, what's that supposed to be i guess oh and those are the dies but i'm not sure or not the dies sequins okay and then we stamp with the bumblebee ink on the label then we have dimensionals to pop the label on and Oh, that's a sequence. So what's this? Oh, that's showing us where to put. Oh, that's what that is. Those are adhesive dots. So they're showing us where to put the adhesive dots because the label will hide them over in the corner there. Is my that's that's what I'm understanding there with our IKEA instructions. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. So that one is this beautiful card base with the fresh freesia and um, polished pink colors and the the darker purple here looks very um, oh shoot I can't think of the name of it <laughs> very very oh not rich raspberry what's the darker one called blackberry bliss oh my goodness why was that hard I had my coffee I'm awake, but apparently my, my ability to find words is not working today. Okay. So they tied the twine around the card base. I'm not a big fan of that because then when you open it, you see tied twine are on the other side. But the benefit of twine on the other side is, I don't know if you've ever done this, you can fold up a check <laughs> or a $20 bill or whatever and tuck it in the twine. So the twine axe has a function as well. So that's kind of handy. But yeah, normally I like to have a layer and then my twine is, and then everything is on the inside or the front of the card and nothing is shown on the inside. But we'll follow the instructions as they are. And when I make my own samples, I can do what I want. So they say 26 inches of twine. I have, it's not showing on your screen, I don't think, but I have my grid paper has a ruler on the bottom and the top. 
So I'm going to measure out the amount that they say. So 16 is my widest number plus 10. That's 26 inches. It's quite a fair bit. So if you're Um, that would be 66 centimeters if you are inclined to go that route, which I should be because I am Canadian, but I don't know. I craft in, in inches and I sew in inches too. So they have it doubled, but I don't know if I have enough for doubling. It's pretty tight. If they didn't give me much, look at that. Very little to tie with. That's okay. We will find a way. Or I can just do a single one as well. Okay, it's super tiny. Or I might have to do it just a knot. I don't know. There's not much here to tie with. To tie a bow with this is going to be practically impossible impossible I'm gonna try though because <laughs> I'm pretty good at bow tying but I would do more than 26 inches I would add like another 10 this is not enough for my liking okay it's like the tiniest bow ever and that was not fun to tie. So give yourself more. And that didn't go, didn't quite work. Well, that's disappointing. Okay, so ignore their measurements. Usually they're right on. But for whatever reason, they are not right on in this case. Maybe I will redo it. Do I have, do I do twine on anything else? Let's see. Cards, where are you? Okay, I'm gonna save it for a different card and I'm gonna do one with more twine because that's too, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous, too short. Let's do that again, but I'm gonna give myself, I don't know, five more inches, I think. So if I do, 16 inches plus they say so they say they say 26 but I'm gonna do I'm gonna do uh, hang on 26 I'm gonna do 30 is that what I said let's try it with 30 inches that should give me enough to tie 15 plus 15 is 30 uses up a lot though doesn't it okay try this again now I have enough to actually tie okay so I suggest 30 and that's even not giving me a lot to work with here still pretty tight But that's definitely better. Okay. Phew. There we go. Their bow is very tiny, but it's a bit ridiculous how tiny that was. Okay, so then this is going to slide right over so the bow is right to the side. And then we need the vellum. So the vellum is going to go, got to make sure I'm using the right side. I guess they look pretty, pretty close to the same. So the vellum's going to go kind of like that. So I want to make sure that I have everything where I want it to be. And then we can put, so we can put our three dots, glue dots on the back of that one 
flower. I don't know, like that's going to not secure the top very well. So I don't feel confident. Um, maybe they, in their picture, they show the glue dots all in a corner <laughs> because that will be covered up by your um, sentiment. But I, I think I need some glue dots under some of the other white areas because otherwise this is just going to flap down, isn't it? I think it will. But I should be able to hide some glue dots underneath some of those other areas. So I'm just going to use theirs and hope for the best. I don't... No, I'm not. I can't. I can't use them. I have to use my own, you guys. I just don't have the patience for those tiny little glue dots that you have to peel backings off of. They drive me bonkers. Okay, so I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to put a glue dot up here because that will be hidden under my label. Like that. And then I think I can put one underneath this little round spot there and have that hidden. I think it's hard to see what I'm doing. Yeah, so that will be mostly hidden under there. Plus it's on the crazy paper, so it's probably gonna hide anyways. Even just having that one might be enough. Okay. So then I can place that like so. So yeah, you can still see that glue dot, but it's just gonna have to be that way. Uh, I might even have to tack. I'm going to tack another one. Hmm, I don't know. We'll see. Let's let's do our label first and I'll have a better idea of positioning for everything. Okay, so this is our label. It doesn't have any little smudgy bits on it, so I can, or nibbly bits as I call them. So we need our stamps. So we're going to use... They used the You Are Amazing stamp. So I will stick with the plan. And grab a block. And as always, um, Paper Pumpkin comes with a block. So you should have a block. If you've been getting Paper Pumpkin, you'll have a block that will work for you. And my cleaning pad has disappeared on me. <laughs> I will find it. I will. There it is. I just want to, as always, clean off the res residue. Just with my Simply Chamois. Yeah, the vellum pieces are very beautiful, aren't they, Eunice? They're so pretty. Okay, so we've got, and they gave us an ink spot of Bumblebee. I'm going to use my main, my, my large ink pad. Because I save, as a demonstrator, I have all the colors. So I just save the in, in, ink spots for um, gifts and giveaways and anything else like that. And I'm using my grid paper to help me be straight. It's interesting, I wouldn't choose this yellow ink for this card, but it is an interesting contrast. Sometimes it, that's what gives you that pop that you're looking for, to have the contrasting color. Instead of choosing a color that's within our card, this is a um, complementary color. It's not, a, it's not on the opposite of the wheel. I guess it's opposite to the purple. I guess it is opposite to the wheel on the color wheel so that's going to go there so now i know that i can probably put another glue dot under here which will help hold the the um oh my goodness my words the vellum <laughs> it'll help hold the vellum 
flatter because over top of that twine or the baker's twine there I can pop one in there and then this guy will go on with dimensionals and I have some dimensionals that I'm working at finishing up here so I will finish these up these are these are from another paper pumpkin kit now because this is laying over top of the twine um, I'm going to put my dimensionals above and below so that it's not laying on so that they're not laying on top of the twine so I'm going to put I can rip these littler ones and use those and I'll just add one over here and that should be good oops yeah some you know some people have a hard time with bows and that's fine like you um i need a certain amount of ribbon or yeah a certain amount of ribbon or twine to tie my bows otherwise it's too difficult Maybe I'll pop that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, if you don't have enough material to tie it, it's not going to work. Make sure that's straight. I'm going to use my grid paper to help me visualize that a bit more. And then we're good. So adding that extra four inches really helped me with that bow. I don't know what they were thinking. Crazy stamping up with their crazy bows. Okay, so there's card number one. Easy peasy. No problemo. Pretty cool. So it is loose. This vellum is all loose out here, which I don't love. So I have a, a dot there of adhesive. It's You can see it, but it's not horribly... You know, you, you don't, oh, I forgot. We were not done. We're not done. We're going to add adhesive dots. So maybe I can add adhesive dots in such a way that I can put my glue dots underneath them. They have the adhesive dots. Or not at I'm calling them adhesive. They have, I don't know what I'm even talking about half the time. I just talk and then words come out and they're usually wrong. <laughs> sequins. They have their sequins around the outside of the card they've got five of them so two over here you can't see that very well two over there and one down there but i think i'm going to put them on my vellum let's try that and see if that will just let me hide some of those my glue dots a little bit so if i'm clever about where i put my glue dots then i can use the sequence Oh, I cut my nails. That's why I'm having a hard time picking up things. Because then that covers up that. That works for me. I'll put one under there. Which actually isn't very visible anyways, which is good. And then I can put a sequin over here. I don't know where I want the rest. This is where I, I, you know, I've talked about that. I always have a hard time with the sequence. I don't know why. It's like, I don't know where to put you. Put one there. That feels right. We'll just go with that. So I've got four. They did five. Um, yeah, sometimes I just overthink it. That's all. Oops. Let's put one. there see and then I get really quiet because I'm thinking I, I often like to put one down in the corner because that's kind of where our eyes when we scan a page our eyes go they kind of go up and then we do like this sort of to scan and we always end up down here so it's nice to have something to finish with so that's what we're finishing with that works I'm okay with that so I put a five on and 
they're good center of the rows units would have been good except i have one right here so i feel like it would be very would have been very parallel or do you mean the rows maybe you meant that that would have worked but i've got them i'm happy with where they are so i covered up my two glue dots this is still free but it's more it feels more secure so i'm good with that really pretty beautiful okay that's card number one done and done okay next card we're gonna do is the little note card so this one is using the evening evergreen small note card and then we have the evening evergreen patterned paper and they have us using stamps so we're going to use the floral stamp and the little flower and then um, we're using the label with the bumblebee ink um, and the little label with the for everything and then we have the thanks to put on there and sequins again okay so we need stamps that's where we will start so we have we need the for everything stamp and the flowers interestingly they don't have us using i mean they don't always have us using all the stamps they all they never do but you can see that there's this nice this one we're not using at all today and these little guys so those will be for another time with the extra things that we will make the alternative cards and projects let me just clean my your amazing stamp and put my flower on this block if it will fit yes it will there we go okay hi kim glad you could join me oops i started on time today so that's a good thing that makes it a little easier for everybody all right and we've got the for everything okay so those are all my stamps i'm just going to give them like i always do a quick clean to make sure that there's no manufacturing residue on these brand new photopolymer stamps okay so they have a stamping on the green and we are using uh, oh they do have us using the no no they don't i'm just looking at the picture again so they just have us using those two stamps as they indicate there with their ikea instructions in color i might add love that they're in color now so this one we're going to use the evening evergreen ink for the flowers and i always like to stamp off like i don't like just doing in the middle i want to be going over the edge so because i'm going to do that and i want to try to keep my paper underneath clean for my video purposes i just like to grab a little mini grid paper so that i can get it dirty i don't have one already dirty so otherwise i would grab an already dirty one and then i can stamp and i there's no real rhyme or reason to how they place them so i'm just going to follow suit so i'm doing straight ink on but you could do let's see what happens when we stamp it off it's really soft if you stamp it off it's almost quite soft and subtle so it depends what look you want i don't know where to put these i have <laughs> i overthink things you guys okay let's put one there very center but that's okay and then we'll throw one see how that goes 
tree and then we've got our little flower and that one will kind of be random it's a little lighter color which is or lighter like it's a mm, a finer outline than the other well maybe it's not this one's just a bolder image probably and so we'll just throw some of those on there those are easier for me to do random because they're small and i can do some that are second strength or whatever half strength i guess you'd call it okay that works i'm good with that fix this one up it got a little wonky okay so there's my stamping i find the big like i said the big flower is harder for me to do random because it's big Oops. so we're done with the evergreen and then i will clean my stamps because I don't have any stamps just sitting on blocks right now so I'm gonna try to keep it that way because I have a tendency to leave things and they collect and build up and then I have oh I do have stamps on blocks I lied and then I put stamps on blocks waiting for me to clean them and then they yeah it just becomes it's like my whole craft room to be honest Okay, and then we have our sentiment that we're going to put on the little label. So we have this one that we punched out. Yeah, Kim, I love this set. Is that the right one? That seems to... Oh, it is. Um, I love the um, expressions in ink in the catalog too. The paper and the whole set is just beautiful. I don't have it either. But it's on my list as soon as it's available okay for everything is going to stamp i'm going to use my grid paper to give me a better idea of being straight it's, it's a very tight fit this for everything beautiful and that was with bumblebee ink which of course came with the kit but i'm using um my own ink pad because i i like to use my larger ink pads because i have them so i can all right and then and then i put these away quickly so i can be cleaned up as i go it's a new thing for me. I'm working hard today anyway. <laughs> In this moment, I'm working hard. Okay, what's next? So we have, they want us to put this on our card base with their glue dots. Maybe those are supposed to be, oh, maybe those are, I don't know. What are glue dots versus, oh yeah, dimensionals has shape on the cards. So when they show, I'm just, I'm just confused momentarily. It's not unusual for this to happen to me. So just as a note to self, when they show in the, the instructions that you're putting dimensionals on, you have that, um, um, not hexagon, whatever that shape is. <laughs> you have that shape. It's not a hexagon, is it? Maybe it is a hexagon. Um, yeah, it is a hexagon. And then when you do adhesive dots, they're the black dots. Okay, so they want us to use adhesive dots to adhere that to our page. I'm gonna use dimensionals just because, no, I'm not. I'm gonna use Tumble Liquid Glue because it's my favorite anyways. So let's just go that route. So Tumble Liquid Glue, but you can use the adhesive dots if you don't have well, if you like them and you don't have other adhesive, then the adhesive dots are, they will hold it on as well. I just find them fussy to apply. So I could have folded this card first. That would have been good, but I didn't. I think Evening Evergreen is my new, 
my new favorite green. It's so rich and it has sort of that uh, just a dark teal color to it, which is nice. Okay. Then we will do the next thing, which is I lost my instructions. The next thing is applying. So they have us attaching the thanks to this one with uh, the glue dot or the adhesive dots. So here's my thanks. I have a little nibbly knobbly bit that I need to trim off there. Pretty good otherwise. Okay, so that's gonna go there with adhesive dots. And they've placed them, again, they've placed them low on the thanks. It's hard to see. So that when they apply your sentiment underneath, it will hide where they place those adhesive dots. So, um, well, mostly. Mostly hide it. This card's really cute, actually. I'm quite, I mean, they all are, of course, but I like the simplicity of this one. Okay, so they used, I'm going to use my glue dots because I, like I said, I, those adhesive dots, the peel off backing part is really not my jam, not my thing at all. So I'll do as they did and put them on the bottom pieces. Don't quite understand, they're not going to be fully hidden because... My paper is only so long and this is quite long so so they have it slightly to the right and it's already attaching here we don't want it to attach it slightly to the right and down that looks right for me so those glue dots are visible But it's not it's not terrible I can live with that and then we need the for everything so that's going to be with dimensionals which again I have some that I have to finish off here so let's use these they barely fit and that's not even a full one so I'm gonna trim that down that it fits a bit better. I went camping on the weekend and I, I had a shower and everything. I still smell campfire smoke. I am nowhere near anything that had campfire smoke on it. I don't know why I'm smelling campfire smoke. <laughs> Okay, then this guy goes on the bottom. I think he's centered. Yeah, pretty, pretty centered on the thanks. Or slightly to the right, if anything. I'm going to go slightly to the right. Make sure it's sent straight. Like that and then they have some sequins on there so I think hmm, I'm just gonna look at their sample again Oops, on the front of the card so mine's so there my there for everything is a little bit farther to the right than I did mine and they did kind of focus all their stamping under where the thanks would be. I didn't do that. So maybe that's something that you might want to consider. It might help that thanks to show a little bit better if there's a darker edge around it. But I think we're good. Okay, let's add some adhesive dots. Or not, I keep calling them that. Let's add these. These things. 
<laughs> sequence. There it is. I stalled and then I found the word. You got to stall sometimes. How many did they put on? I feel like I haven't had my coffee. My brain isn't working. But I did. I swear I did. Okay, they put on like five again. They like their they like all these sequins. I don't know if five works for me. It's a lot. Well, I'm gonna put them on the center of some of my flowers, I think. Theirs are kind of random. I don't know. That's three. Okay, center of flowers and then not centered because that's not necessarily going to work. Let's do one there. That's four. I feel like five is too many. I feel like four is too many. I'm going to take this one off. I think, I don't know. This is, why is this so hard for me, you guys? I don't know why I have such a hard time with se sequins. There, let's do that. That feels better. Okay, three sequins. I was going to put them on the centers of my flowers, but I don't think that's working for me. So I'm going to purposely move them off the centers now. <sighs> I'm fussing. I should have just done what exactly what they said, right? Then it wouldn't be fussing. There, let's do that. Three feels good. Okay, so I did three, only three sequins, and that's where that's where they landed. Whew. Done. Really pretty. Okay, so that's two of my cards done. So that's where we're at so far. We have one more, and this one still has sequins, but the rest is pretty quick. Okay. So those are our two so far. Put those aside. Card number three has the Bumblebee card base. I love this, this Bumblebee. It's so close to crushed curry though. Like, like sometimes when I hold up the crushed curry paper and the Bumblebee paper, it's very difficult for me to tell which is which but the the bumblebee has a ever so slight more of a brown base color than the crushed curry does okay so we have our card base we have our vellum and that one is going to just have glue dots in the middle as they tell us in the instructions and again, I've got my own. So if they're in the middle, then they'll be hidden behind the fancy paper that we will be layering over top. Um, the leaves are directional, so I've got my leaves going up not down if you want your leaves down you put them down that's okay too leaves do that so in this case i'm okay with this being a little loose around the edges because that adds a little bit of lift for me i don't think it'll sag down i think it'll be okay then we need our three things that we punched out those three foliage elements and those will layer on top. So they have, they have the pink one down first. Kind of like so. that give or take and then we have the purple one a 
And that one they have kind of like, how do they have it? This ish. Something like that. And then the green one on top of those. And I have a little piece I have to punch out here. I'm just checking to make sure I have all the elements popped out of there, which I do. So then that one they have like that, looks like. Sort of, I don't know, mine doesn't quite look the same as theirs. Okay, that's okay. Then we have some twines. So where's that twine that I had before that was too small for my other card? And they have, they say to do 12 inches and there's no tying for this one. So I think we can probably trust them. So we'll do 12, which is half of what we used almost. So I can use the other half for the, another card like this one. And then they just have us looping it back and forth. I need to straighten this a little bit with my nails iron it without heat <laughs> so they just have us looping it back and forth like this like that and then attaching that with a glue dot in the middle like so and that's where my sentiment's going to go i'm just going to trim those ends because my twine was a little frayed on the ends it was afraid okay and then we need a sentiment so this one has the congratulations and it's on the very straight label with the evergreen outline on it. I'm just going to trim the nibbly bits of paper off the sides. And then we need our stamp. So this is the congratulations stamp. You could do sending hugs, that would fit nicely as well. Again, I'll just clean off the residue, manufacturing residue. And then we need our bumblebee ink, I believe. Yes, bumblebee. Make sure that's straight. When you have, whenever you have a straight, long, skinny photopolymer stamp, you have to make sure that it's actually straight on your block because you can actually intentionally curve them, right? So if you don't want it to be intentionally curved, or accidentally curved. You want to make sure that it's straight by using grid paper or whatever you have handy. There we go. Bumblebee ink. Pretty, pretty. Clean your stamp, always. And 
then that one is going to go on with dimensionals. Dimensionals, if I can find them, because I always put them down. Oh, they're there. So I'm, I'm like I said, I'm using the, the dregs of this big sheet here of paper pumpkin dimensionals. There we go. So then that's going to go on the card straight, hopefully. And it's going to go right over top of all of those elements. I'm going to go right about there. I don't know. Whoops, that's not centered. I want it centered left and right of my card. As much as I can and I, I, when I eyeball it. There we go. There. Looks good. Okay. So there's that. And then the last thing to add are more of these beautiful sequins. So they just have them. They don't, in the pictures, they don't really have them placed. Well, I guess they are. These ones aren't too bad. Sometimes I find it looks like they just threw them on. But these ones are pretty good. So again, they have one, two, three, four. Is it only four? Yeah, no, five. I can't see the fifth one. One, two, three. Oh, there it is. Okay, so five. I'm not going to think about it. I'm purposely not thinking. Now I am. Okay, there. There. Done. Five. Whew. That was a little easier that time. I really like this one. This one's very pretty too. They're all pretty. I like the colors in this one though. The color combination and the bright. I like the foliage. Okay. So there are our, those are our three cards from the paper pumpkin kit. Um, for the June kit. And next week I will share with you my alternatives. So I, I don't have the designer series paper though to work with, but um, I'll find a way. I'll figure it out and, and bring some fun alternatives for us uh, to make next week. Thanks for watching and have a great week. And don't forget if you're interested in Stamp Camp that's coming up in July, you have until the end of June to register for that. Um, uh, for those of you who are in Canada, it's open for registration until June 30th. So have a great week and we'll see you next time.